Well, what's up guys and welcome back. I'm back here at Gettle Kia of Bradenton, Florida because guess what? 2023 Kia Sport just arrived earlier today. So I rushed here. I helped them get the white plastic off of it. And quite frankly, I haven't had much time to spend with this vehicle. So today we're going to do a true first impressions walk around and the first look of this vehicle. So if you're ready to go on this journey with me, let's go. If we talk about Kia Sportage, we have to go back to 1993. That's actually when the first Sportage was introduced. So that's been uh, many, many years ago, 30 years ago, when the first Sportage came on the market. Now, this is the fifth generation one, and it wasn't really until the third and fourth generation that Kia Sportage became one of the most popular vehicles in the United States. Now, it competes against vehicles such as Honda CRV, Toyota RAV4, Mazda CX-5, and of course, its sibling, which is the Hyundai Tucson. And this is the fifth generation for it. I just did the 2022 a few months ago, thinking that I'm gonna have to wait almost a year to go with the 2023 model, but it just arrived today. So I'm super excited to bring it to you and let's take a look at how it changed. Well, right from the bat, you can see that it's actually wider, it's longer, it's taller, so it definitely has more room on the interior. Uh, and that's because now it's sitting on the Sorento platform. It is also so the first Sportage that is being produced in Georgia, United States. Now that's for the US market, of course. So let's take a look at the hood. Now the previous generation one has this big indent in the middle of the hood. And this one also has it, but that's more subtle. It's not as extreme as on the previous gen one. It does have the new Kia redesigned logo right in front. And then this is an X-Line package. So this is to be made a little bit more off-roady and rugged, but still has a lot of shine in it. If you look at this grill, a little bit different than what we normally see, the tiger nose grill. It still has some elements of that tiger nose, but uh, definitely doesn't look the same. Kind of looks more like on that uh, Kia Carnival that I've seen, especially when you look at this trim piece right here. This is like that brushed aluminum look. This is open, this is open. Again, that brushed aluminum look continues over here. What's also different, no hiding it, this whole headlight unit's completely different. Now, daytime running lights right here, this boomerang looking daytime running lights, very nice, visible. Kind of reminds me a little bit of the Hyundai Sonata. If you remember when they first came up with the new gen Hyundai Sonata and this headlight unit completely redesigned I haven't seen any Kia with anything that's close to this. So you can see right on top of here, you have the turn signal. And this is an incandescent turn signal. And then the bottom portion of it, they're LED lights and the high beams, of course. No fog lights present on this particular model. And this piece right here is just a design element. So let's see what powers up this 2023 Sportage. It says the default power plant on the 2023 Sportage is getting 2.5 liter four cylinder engine, 187 horsepower, 178 pound feet of torque, made it to an eight speed automatic transmission that's available in either front wheel drive or all wheel drive. As far as the gas mileage on this, you got 23, 28, 25 combined gas mileage, so it's not bad, but you really probably should start looking for the hybrid versions. And that's gonna be two of them, the hybrid and the plug-in hybrid. Those are gonna have 1.6 liter engine, 
little bit more horsepower and the better gas mileage. So the hybrid's supposed to get 226 horsepower and the plug-in hybrid 261. So those should be the ones that I'll be waiting for. Now, one thing guys, right here, why, why? Why? Tell me why there's a prop stick on here while on the Kia Soul LX, which is a $20,000 vehicle, they already have the hydraulic struts. I'm well, not sure why Kia does it. Well, as you can see, it looks completely different on the side as well. And let's take a look at a few design elements on here. Look at this bottom trim right here. That kind of reminds me of a Hyundai Santa Fe, that uh, rugged one. So you can see that on the X line, that kind of continues with this trim. It does have this cladding all around uh, the wheel wells as well as at the bottom of it. And this kind of brushed aluminum trim continues. We've seen that on the front as well. But overall, when you look at this vehicle, you can see that it's much larger than the previous generation one. Matter of fact, it's 183 and a half inches long. So it's going into a Sorrento category. It's probably gonna have plenty of room on the inside. Uh, well, Kia claims that it's a class leading. We're gonna check it out in just a little bit. And uh, it also sits higher off the ground. The total ground clearance on the X line and the SX is 8.3 inches 7.1 on the base model ones wheels now i like these 19 inch wheels pretty cool design two-tone design you have the aluminum you have the black that matches on this black color of this vehicle and as far as the size of the tires 235 on the width and you have 55 on the height on it so now there's going to be another model on top of the X line. I think it's an X Pro, which is going to be the off roady one. This is just the off roady looking one. Now, the other one supposedly is going to have some off road capabilities as well. Well, what else do we have here? Mirror caps, the same color as the rest of this vehicle. You do have a turn signal built in here. You do have blind spot assist as well. Smart entry system. Okay, all you have to do is push the button on the door handle put your hand inside of it, or actually you have to push it in order to open it. So we've seen that on other Kia model before. No chrome anywhere on this vehicle. You can see it's all blacked out. You have this shiny trim all around the windows. Windows are the nice size in here. And then there's two different uh, roof rails that are available depending on which model you choose from. This is the X line, so it's more off-roady. So kind of the standing up roof rails. Now you also have the ones that are flush. And then of course you'd have to get the crossbars to uh, take the full benefit of it and put something on top of it. Now, one different thing in here, you can see past this window, rear window right here, you have this little design element. You have this kind of diamond shape. I'm gonna see if I can get you a close up of it. And actually that same trim continues starting off with this brand new tail light. So let's move to the back and see what it is. Let's see what we have in the back. I already started mentioning the tail lights and they kind of look like the EV6 that I did. As a matter of fact, there's more EV6 like features on the interior of it. But let's concentrate on the lights that are fully LED tail lights right here. However, this portion right here, which is the turn signal, this is an incandescent bulb inside of it. So it's kind of a combo light inside of here. On top of here, you have a nice gate spoiler, third brake light that's incorporated in here. And guess what? The window wiper, the rear window wiper is right underneath here. Perfect. Finally, we've seen another Kias, and I'm glad they actually made it for a Sportage as well. Now, the two lights are kind of combined by this trim piece right here. That doesn't light up. And then you have the brand new Kia logo, Sportage on one side and the X line on the other line. Moving down to the bumper, you have the same brushed aluminum trim looking trim. This is all plastic, but it looks like brushed aluminum. You have the mandatory uh, lights right here, and then there's no visible exhaust. There's no trailer hitch on this if you did want to tow something with it. It's only about 2,500 pounds, but that's enough for maybe a small camper or definitely enough if you want to put a bike rack on top of it. Now, it's also equipped with the power tailgate and you can open it from the remote right here now let's see how it opens nice and tall i can fit right underneath here let's check out the roominess lots more room than on the previous generation one you can see uh, there is a floor right here opens up you do have a spare tire right underneath here which is a big plus and then you can fold down those seats this is a 60 40 split you do have those levers right here i have to do is pull them fall down the seats 
for the maximum cargo capacity right here. What else do we have in the back? Now there's LED lights right here. You have the 12 volt power outlet over here. You have some hooks over at the bottom here if you wanted to put that uh, cargo mat or cargo net, for example. So that's how much room you have. Definitely class leading. I agree with Key on that one. Get out. I have this seat moved the same as the seat for the driver and look at the broominess right here i probably have four inches in front of my legs now that's exciting because that's the first time that i see that much of a room inside of what they still consider a compact suv plenty of headroom even with this panoramic sunroof i have plenty of that shoulder room the seats are nice they're comfortable the interior well let's check it out together guys we're gonna get right to it with the rear doors you can see different elements in here this is hard plastic soft uh, a vinyl trim basically and the nicely padded armrest now you have this uh, shiny black trim in here that's going to be basically your fingerprint magnet moving up on top you have this new style door handle and the simulated wood trim and right at the bottom here you have a speaker cover and uh, you have a little bit more storage inside of the door now looking at the seats itself now this is not leather kia call it the syntax material so it is a man-made leather kind of looks like the real one and it's nicely perforated in the middle also have some kind of a design on it as well middle opens up you do have cup holders in this armrest and uh, you have three seat belts so three people can sit in the back but also I want to point out, we can see that in the Tellurites and the Sorrentos. Now you have it on the Sportage as well, which is a built-in USB uh, C port right in the seat. You also have some hooks and the pockets in the backs of the seats. Kind of a deep well for the, your feet to slide in underneath here. You do have some vents for the AC and a little bit more storage inside of this uh, console in the middle and you do have a little bit of a hump but not too bad now also the seat back pockets are on both seats not just the passenger one which is pretty cool now look at the design of this you can put like a hook for your uh, clothing inside of here as well or and basically put like an ipad or some kind of a tablet for the kids if you'd like to as well let's listen to the sound of the closing door to see if the quality was not sacrificed right here Boom, nice solid thumb. That impresses me even more every time I look at the new Kia product. And uh, of course, on the front door, same kind of deal like on the back door. Now I was looking at the speakers. These are non-branded. Sometimes you can have the Harman Kardon stereo on it and the same theme basically as on the rear door, except with this one, of course, you have the lock, unlock, mirror controls, uh, window controls, etc. in here. And uh, looking right at the seats. Now the driver's seat on this X-Line model is powered. The passenger is not and the front seats are a little bit more bolstered than the rear seats of course for the better uh, hold for the driver now what do we have here this is a pretty cool interior before we jump in it at a show there's a few buttons right on the left hand side of the steering wheel and that's basically your dimmer your gate opener traction control off and that's where your parking brake is you also have your tilted telescoping steering wheel and basically it is uh, let's see the wrench on it uh, uh, can we push it yep there you go pushed it in so uh, yeah it's regular wrench on this check out the interior on this 23 sportage definitely more modern than on the previous generation one we'll get to the screens but overall the feel of it look how cold the vents are now the vents have this uh, black trim around it which is not my favorite but on the interior it does have this polished aluminum trim now the same simulated wood trim continues on the bottom here as it is on the sides of the doors now you have a regular glove box right here pretty deep this is kind of looking like a vinyl wrapped there's no head up display at least not on this model but you do have this huge two screens right here so those are two screens right here 12.3 inch navigation screen right here and the digital instrument cluster now if we move back right here take a look at the steering wheel seen that before but i like how they did it how they incorporated this middle portion into the steering wheel a lot better than on the previous gen one new kia logo right here 
bunch of buttons, the mode and the start button. Those are customizable, so you can set it up to whatever you want. Well, there's a few options on it. And then you have the pages button that's going to change what's going on in the instrument cluster. So let's take a look right in back here. Okay, you can see that's a fully digital instrument cluster. Let's see what we have. So drive info, basically your trip. Then you have your navigation, so you can put your turn-by-turn -turn direction in here, and then you can have also the tire pressure that's going to display while driving. And uh, we're back to the lane keep assist. Let's get this new lane keep assist here, and back to the traction control. Now, what else do we have here? There's a lot more customization, which I believe uh, you have to go to the main screen to customize the display on here. We're going to check that out. But on the left-hand side, basically, you have the speedometer right here on the right hand side you have the tachometer all digital here's your fuel gauge on the other side you have the temperature gauge you also have the speed limit so that reads the signs we're in the smart drive mode there's three actually or four let's see drive modes okay so you have normal sport smart and snow those are different drive modes that are available i'll leave it in sport for some reason i like that mode best and then let's take a look at this 12.3 inch navigation screen now this is the new technology we've seen it on other models as a matter of fact when i told you it's got some of the ev6 features i was referring to this screen but not only let's take a look okay hit the main screen button home button right here you can see those big icons now they look a lot bigger on this than this all the other ones basic features map navigation phone phone projections voice memo climate valet mode quiet mode uh, those are all pretty cool features if you ask me if you don't know phone projection okay big screen and it says you need to use a cable to put that on now if you were to get a base lx model you get the wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but you won't get this nice screen. You would get like an eight inch screen, I believe. Now, um, you know, as far as the voice memo, this is a feature which allows you to record your voice memo and then retrieve it later. So you don't have to actually look for a pen if somebody calls you uh, while driving, you can just uh, record it and, and then get back to it later. Valet mode, quiet mode is pretty cool. If you have kids sleeping in the back, basically, it, uh, it turns off the rear speakers and it kind of uh, limits the output of the front speakers to uh, uh, very low uh, volume. Media, okay, let's see what we have here. So you have your regular FM, Sirius, Sounds of Nature, AM. Take a look how this looks because this is this pretty cool design for the radio. Look at this, it's the retro looking one We've seen it on other Kia models. And maybe we can uh, actually turn this up a little bit and see it sounds pretty good actually um, it is not branded so it's not Carmen Cardon I think you can get it on the some of the higher end models right there but pretty cool design as far as the display and then in the setup let's see if we can do the screen setup uh, where would it be? Screen layout, analog clock, digital clock, none. So that would be on your main screen, I believe. Display. Let's see. Blue light filter, extend rear camera use. Um, not sure what that is, but uh, let's go back in here. Go back to setup. I like how uh, responsive this is. This is a very responsive system. Uh, we can customize your buttons right here, device connections, uh, I've already seen that. Uh, so those are your settings. Now let's go to the vehicle settings. Cluster, there you go. Cluster theme selection. So link to drive mode, basically three different ones. Uh, if I uncheck that, you can have theme A, B, and C. And uh, basically what that does is just changes colors, just like the drive mode. So we're going to link it to drive modes. I thought it was going to be a little bit more customization to it than this, but nevertheless, it's pretty cool. Uh, driver's assistance, speed limit, warning timing, warning volume, all that stuff. It does have plenty of the safety features in here, forward safety. Um, so it does have that driver assistance, active assist, warning only or off. So you can basically customize the level of the assistance that you might want from it, which is pretty cool. 
And uh, going back to the home screen, let's see how the map looks. Okay, it's also the updated map system. I always like the way it, how nice and crisp it is. It's easy to read. Now it also uh, provides you with the traffic uh, data and the road conditions. So if there's any road constructions and stuff like this, then navigation system has it built in. And then you, of course, can have this uh, one-third screen. So you can have two-thirds on the a map or anything that you want and then one third uh, you can basically scroll down and you have the clock you have the compass calendar weather it's unavailable right now because it hasn't been set up yet but those are pretty cool features on here so this is what we have here in the screen we've seen this infotainment system on other kias before vents right underneath here of course your hazard lights and this panel right here just like on the ev6 now I like it. It's not shiny, it's, it's very visible. So you have some shortcuts, map, navi, custom button, seek track, radio, media, setup. And uh, guess what? If you are like, hey, I want the controls for the HVAC system for my AC and climate control. Well, all you have to do is press this button right here. Check this out, boom, it changes. Now you have the temperature control, you have all the climate control features in here. And then, by the way, you can also access that climate control features from the main screen. But if you want to have the radio shortcuts and stuff like this, right here, press it one more time, and it goes to your climate control settings. All right, how to access that same feature on the main screen? Let's go to home, and then basically all you do is hit this climate control button, and then you can basically select your temperature slider right here. You can select the vents that the air is coming out of. And then you can go back, AC, sink, etc. You also have some climate settings in here. So that's pretty cool. So that's also customizable. Well, scrolling back down to the bottom, you have this polished aluminum trim. And right underneath here, you have your cigarette lighter style charger usb port and then you can see that this is a wireless charger as well now uh, some of the pictures that you might have seen on the uh, kias uh, sportage has this dial style gear shifter and i believe this is reserved for the hybrid versions now in the regular one you have this kind of an old style not sure why they decided to go with this we've seen this on uh, i think the k5 had it some of the previous one i wasn't like too crazy about it but uh, well you know it's pretty cool it's kind of like an airplane you know put it in gear and go now of course the regular shifter right here you can also put it in the manual mode by shifting this to the left and then you can control the gears up and down well what happens if you put it in reverse of course that turns on your rear view camera and i wish more of those vehicles were standard equipped with the 360 this one doesn't have it it's just a regular camera it is uh, quite nice as uh, far as the quality of it i'm not sure if they updated software on it because we've seen some of the other ones which i think was the same this one is more crisp um, and then you have some settings on the camera as well. Well, let's put it in park because uh, there's nothing else to see in here. And let's take a look at the rest of this console. So you can see engine start and stop. That's where you start the vehicle. Then you have your gear shifter. Then you have your drive mode selector. You can turn off that automatic engine start stop functions, auto hold, hill descent assist, parking sensors. This is for your a rear view camera and then this is an x line so it's not the top of the line you can see some of the blank buttons so i believe these would be well logically this would be for air uh, cooled seats and this is for heated seats this might be the heated steering wheel i'm not sure what they would use this button on and then they have this cool cup holder check this out boom you want the cup holders there you go for smaller cups and then you can slide those back in well, and they will disappear. Kind of cool looking. See it again, boom. Now you got cup holders. Now you can use it for more storage if you'd like to. And back here, you have a little bit more storage right underneath this armrest over here. Let's take a quick look at this top console. 
a regular mirror we don't have just want to make sure we don't have this uh, camera mirror um, okay LED touch lights right here pretty cool you also have the Kia Connect info and uh, um, emergency services uh, button basically and you do have this panoramic center so how nice it is it opens up there you go adds a lot of light in here so that's a cool feature and this nice air scarf right here for uh, so you don't get blown away with the wind with the sunroof open well guys this is pretty cool but that wouldn't be anything if the car didn't drive nice so let's check it out let's see how it drives well guys check it out we're on the interior of this 2023 kia sportage and there's no information as of today on the kia's website as far as the pricing as far as the different models so really i was lucky to get this which is a brochure so i can tell you a little bit of what models are going to be available um, now the 2.5 liter gdi across the board for the non-hybrid models we talked about it and the trim levels lx ex sx sx Pres Prestige X line, which is the one that we're sitting in right now. And then you have the Sportage X Pro and X Pro Prestige, which are actually going to be the uh, off roady vehicles. Now, as far as the hybrid models, you're going to have the LX EX and the SX Prestige and X line and X line Prestige on the plug in hybrid. So those are coming later. We don't have those right now now i had to go to the outside source so hopefully this pricing is correct but it says that the new 2023 kia sports lx base front wheel drive is going to start at 25,990 and two thousand dollars more for the all-wheel drive the ex at 27,990 sx 31,490 and let's see let's see if this matches with the sticker on it so the x line for this is the X Pro, so it doesn't even have this. So the X line right here, all wheel drive auto, the one that I'm sitting in right now, starts at 30,790, uh, which is about right. And then the X Pro all wheel drive model, um, it's going to be at 34,990. X Pro Prestige at 36,790. It'll be interesting to see uh, what these are going to look like and what features they're going to have so um, i have the list of features but it'll be nice to kind of play around with it also super excited about the hybrids and the plug-in hybrids that are going to be coming in with more horsepower um, you know 226 and 261 on the plug-in hybrid now kia also says that the plug-in hybrid is going to have 32 miles all electric range so let's take this one for a spin see how it feels now i'm in the sports mode and i'm going to leave it in that just uh because we'll see how that uh performs in this 2.5 liter engine basic engine right here check out the turning radius in my old archaic way uh, stop at this parking spot i'm gonna count how many parking spots does it take to turn it all the way around so we have one two three four and a quarter about four and a quarter parking spots to give it a 360 which is basically in line for what the other vehicles are now keep in mind that this has the extended wheelbase it's longer than the previous generation one i also believe that this is longer than the european version and uh, let's see overall feel of the vehicle let's check out the visibility front obviously you have this nice windshield uh, really a few obstructions i like how they do this a little light uh, the windows right here so you can see through it without um, almost any obstructions on the side nice size windows that gives for this uh, better visibility to the side and then if you uh, want to turn around to see if there's nobody back there now the, there's a little window all the way and uh, the third window right there so that adds for this uh, better visibility as well now of course you still have a little bit of a blind spot on it but it's not as bad okay how do you sit well the seats kind of hugs you it's not too aggressive we are going to see if it does its job on the corners etc so okay merging and traffic is fine Of course being a non-turbo engine there's no lag with acceleration 
187 horsepower i mean this is a decent sized vehicle but it's definitely in line with uh, the competition so it's not too bad so i have that's turned on right now is this lane centering and that basically wants to keep me in the middle of the lane so if i don't put a turn signal and i try to kind of veer off the lane it's going to try to correct me see now i put the turn signal i can turn there's no warnings anything like this so this is a pretty cool feature it's also adjustable that uh, it's either actively going to help you it's going to just give you a warning or you can turn it off at all if you don't like this feature now why wouldn't you well i don't know but you know definitely in this day and age where a lot of people get distracted this is very helpful keeps you in the center of the lane now one thing that uh, i can see it might be an issue let's say if you're getting off of the expressway and you're on that ramp and you kind of don't want to be in the center of the lane but you want to get the best uh, track to get off this might be something that's kind of annoying but other than that it is a nice feature to have I guess I gotta tell you, we're gonna be able to check out the acceleration from the stop because we're number one, the red light, and uh, see how it accelerates. Sports mode, let's see if that 187 horsepower engine is strong enough to pull the weight of this vehicle. It's not the fastest thing out there, but it's substantial, you know, as far as merging in the traffic. I mean, that's going to do the job. I'm really curious of how that hybrid and the plug-in hybrid are going to perform in that. Well, overall, I think they did a really nice job redesigning this vehicle. Previous generation was nice, but, you know, it uh, needed some updates. It needed the new technology, which obviously this one has with this huge screen, curved screen. It looks great. It's got this brand new technology on it. It also is bigger. It's more roomy, you know, price wise. Yeah, well, you're looking from, you know, the high 25s to almost $40,000. So it's not a cheap vehicle, but nothing is cheap these days, but uh, definitely competitive in the segment. Um, also, you know, one of the things that I thought at first, they go like, well, why wouldn't they put this turbo engine? I really like this SX Prestige that I test drove here at the Gettel Kia last year. And I thought it was a nice pickup, etc. But, you know, now that I think about it, they're going to come up with this plug-in hybrid with 261 horsepower. Definitely, that's going to be a vehicle for me to test drive to see how it is. And hopefully, as soon as they get it, they'll bring it on the channel. Guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope this was helpful. I hope I brought some value into your lives. And if you like watching videos like this, check out the rest of my channel. I post twice a week. So hopefully, you'll find something that you like. And until then, I will see you in my next video. Cheers.